Okay, we just harvested a uh, big island billy goat, and uh, we're going to do a demonstration how to skin it and uh, quarter it out with the big game skinner. Okay, the first thing we want to do, we're not going to gut the animal. Uh, we're going to leave all the guts in. So we're going to get the animal up on its haunches. We're going to make a small incision right at the tail. And then we're going to come in with the skinner. And we're only going to take the skin off the meat that we're going to put into the bag. So we got a guided skinner. We got two blades, one to skin it, one to cut the skin, and then one to peel the skin back. So we're going to take the back strap. First. Okay, we got to peel back far enough. We're going to find that hip bone. Make a 45 incision. Come right along the spine. We want to take that back strap all the way up to the top. This guy doesn't have a very big back strap, but still be good eating. Roddy, can you get me a bag out? Come over. Coming right up. See? Okay, when we get above the joint, we're going to spin this right on around. Take that hide away. Ready? Hold on. This way, hold it that way. Okay. When you get to this point, you want to find that hip bone again and that spine. You want to come right along the spine. Come around that hip bone. Try to keep the hair out and just peel the meat back. You're going to peel it back about four to six inches. And then we flip it over to the other side. Right at the, the pelvis. The back, there's another bone, the pelvis bone. You're going to come right around that. Make an incision in that. Okay, 
first hind quarter. Now the unique thing about the big game skinner is we're able to, to pop the joint. And all animals are the same. You come up from that shin bone, you find that knuckle right about a half inch, quarter inch is that joint. We come right around with this guy and pop that joint. See how easy that is? Once you get it broke, it's easy to twist it a couple times and then just cut it off. Okay, hind quarter number one. Now this, this, like all skinners, this skinner won't work on loose skin. You'll, you'll fight it, it just won't work on it. No skinner will. So use your other knife, come from the inside, and make an incision coming straight up. You always want to stay to the inside of the hide so you're not cutting the hair. If you cut from the inside, the hair stays on the skin and it doesn't contaminate the meat. Once you back to taunt skin, use your other hand and hold it, then it's easier to peel that skin back. Then again, we're coming down below that, that knuckle. We want to skin that so it's easier to pop that joint off. And we're just cutting right on around. Back to skinning. Arrow got him. Gonna hold this for me. Got it. It's always easier when you have someone helping you. It's not impossible to do it by yourself, but when you're field dressing, you gotta pack the animal out. This is the best technique. Even when you don't have to pack it out, you notice how clean I am. I, I have very little blood on my hands. Uh, that's, that's the technique of not having to gut it. And it's just a waste of time. Usually the ribs are shot up from the, the wound and they're not worth the time to, to try to get them. Very little meat on them. This front shoulder, there's no bones to hold it in place, so we just cut it right off the rib cage. Reach in, and notice we're not wasting the time trying to skin it out the rib cage. We're, we're leaving all the guts in. You get the tenderloin, you come, you're coming back to that hip bone and the last rib where the loin is. You're going to make a small incision right up against the rib. The ribs end right there. You can pretty much pop it open with your hand. Right inside is that tenderloin. So you're gonna stay tight to the inside of the ribs so you don't cut the meat. And you reach right in, pop it out. Let's stick that one in with the back strap. See, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We'll just lay him over. Okay, 
Okay, we're good enough for the back strap. Again, we're finding that hip bone. Coming back at a 45, coming right down the spine. The goat back strap's a little bit on the small side, but it's still good eating. You just want to stay as tight to the rib cage as you can. And I always like to start at the back. Work my way forward. We don't want none of that blood shot. Back strap number two. All animals are a little bit different. This guy's got some tough hide on him. As long as you take your time, come right on up. See how nice it makes that quick work out of pulling the skin back. Right? want to take the time and try to keep the animal out of the dirt. Makes it so much easier when you get back to the kitchen and you're trying to clean up. Okay again Rowdy, can you hold that there? Yeah. Again we're, we're cutting the back, the top first before we pop the joint. We're coming down about four inches Peeling this down right along the pelvis. And you can feel where the bones are. There's your hip bone. There's that back butt bone. You want to come right around that guy. Once you get that, that hip joint, it's just a matter of taking your time and always cutting against the meat so you make sure you get most of the meat out. Again, we got that leg extended backwards easier. We're running our hand right up that shin bone right when you hit that first knuckle. We're about a half inch above that. It's that easy. No fighting it, no breaking it over your leg. Try to pop that joint. Okay, we're on to the front shoulder. But again, in the front shoulder, I always like to come back in with my other knife get it going before using the skinner.
You want to hold that leg, Daddy? Grab that skin right there. Okay. Yeah, pull it. You want me to use the same bag as the hand holders? Yeah. Again, we're just cutting right along the rib cage, keeping any bloodshot or, or hair out of it. two ways you can do it. There's actually two joints on all animals. You got the one that's interlocked and then you got the flat joint. The, the back is easier to do the flat joint. I find the front joints easier to do the, the opposite. And we're just cutting those tendons from around. We're popping it off. Okay, the only thing left with this guy is his tenderloin. We're finding that. And use the, use the height of the animal to keep your, your hands clean. If you have a, a quarter that's bloody and contaminated, try not to spread it to the rest of the meat. So you can use the hide, you can use grass. Kind of keep your hands clean. It's going to help you hold on to the knife. So we're finding the last rib, the hip bone. We're going to reach in without puncturing the intestines. And we're going to come right along that spine. tenderloin and that does it that is uh, it all these knives are uh, completely comes apart dishwasher safe replaceable blade built-in screwdriver extra screws in the handle and until our next time happy hunting and be safe